so at this point we're going to take the um, seat engine tutorial table we did a little bit further. Um, one thing I often like to do is actually set up a, a script to, for the um, in the Lua table script to auto attach. Um, so as you can see I'm not actually attached to the process yet and we're going to go ahead and write that script up and then run it and see, see if it actually works. Um, really not too complicated. Um, sometimes you can just attach to the process to get the process name. Um, a lot of times I just like to actually navigate to where the exe is stored and just copy that straight from the file. Um, but the first thing we're going to want is a variable for the process name so we can keep track of that. Um, So once we store that, um, one thing I do make use of in this script and even some of my other scripts is going to be the main form. Um, it's a constant added, I think it's 6.7. <coughs> but if you're using an older version, you can actually just do um, something pretty simple to double check and even make it accessible so that way you can still use it kind of normally. Basically this will just set it up so that way if it's, you know, old enough and it's got um, a new enough version and it does have that accessible, it won't be nil and thus it won't do anything. But if it is nil, then we'll go ahead and set it to get main form and then we'll just have a, a global variable that we've created main form to be able to access that. Um, and of course this same kind of thing could be done with address list and, and whatnot. So after we do that, some of the things we're going to want to do is go ahead and create the timer and all that. Again, we can go ahead and make a comment here. So we know what this section of the script is. Um, you can make this global, but there's really no need for it. We won't really need it beyond the scope of this script. Um, so I tend to just make these kind of things local. Basically, I tend to make everything local unless they absolutely need it to be global or there's a good reason for it to be global. One thing to note with Lua is uh, like this line here automatically you know, creates a variable and assigns it the value of nil. So it's exactly the same as this. Um, the only thing is I actually like to, again, I like to be explicit in a lot of cases. And so with this, I, I like to be explicit that this way I know, it, you know, if I look at the script two years later, I'll know that I intentionally set it to nil and it wasn't, I just forgot to give it a default or something like that. Um, not really necessary, but it's, you know, up to you whether you do that. Um, so we'll want to set an interval value and basically this will be um, for the timer on Cheat Engine. I think even Lua maybe, um, it's every thousandth of a second. So if we give it an interval of 100, that'll make it every tenth of a second. We really don't need it to run any more than that. Uh, to me, even every tenth of a second, it really you wouldn't even notice a difference other than it'll cause more recesses, resources to be used if we want less than that. Um, another thing I like to do is actually give it a max of, you know, the number of ticks so this way and we'll set it up to where it'll only run about 5,000 here in a 500 seconds. Um, well, it seems like it should be plenty of time to be able to open whatever order you want and it's still attached to the process and do its thing. Um, but this way in case we launch a table and then walk away to go grab dinner, it's not running the whole time and we forget about it. It will eventually max out and stop. Um, that one obviously we just want to give it since it's going to be how we're going to count the number of ticks we just go ahead and give it a default to zero and then for a max um, this we're going to go and set up basically if it's zero or less than zero it'll be seen as a, um, as we're not wanting to give it a max so this way if we ever need to change that behavior for some reason we can but Let's go and give it a value of 5,000, and like I said, that'll be 500 since it's tenth of a second. That'll be 500 seconds, more or less, is how long this will run. And then for 
any um, events, I usually like to go with underscore and then lowercase the event what I'm actually having this function fire for. So this way it makes it easier to keep track of. Um, naming conventions are up to you, it's just whatever works for you and makes sense is really all that matters. So here in this timer tick function, basically every tick of the timer, this function is going to be called. Um, and not technically timers on computers are, you know, based on a, a vibrating quartz crystal more or less. Um, so there's a lot more ticks than what we'll actually keep track of. But uh, as far as the, the programming language here is concerned, it's going to be every tenth of a second. And thus every tenth of a second is going to be one tick. Um, kind of a an odd way to do it, but ultimately you and I still keep track of, I mean we could even call this on timer, that's how Lua or um, in Cheat Engine it's actually called the on timer function, but just um, from other programming languages I still think of it as a timer tick. Um, but again, naming conventions are entirely up to you. Um, so the first thing we're going to want to do is check to see if the process is available, basically meaning if it's been launched. Um, about the easiest way is just to use a function uh, get process ID from process name and then we'll pass that process name constant or that process name global that we created. Um, Here, obviously, kind of like the name implies, um, it's going to return the uh, you know the process ID if it's available, but then basically it'll return nil if it's not available. And we want this to run first, so we want to check if it's not nil. So that way, if it is, we're not going to do anything else except attach to the process. Um, that and actually, we're going to want to destroy the timer. And that way the timer just kind of stops here. Um, but then the next thing we're going to want to do is open the process. So here's where we're going to want to check on those uh, the max ticks and you know see if it's you know greater than zero. And if it is, then we're going to want to continue with our check. That's with just an and, and then check to see if the um number of ticks is greater than or equal to our max. If it is, then we'll just want to destroy the timer. Um, so like I said, we want to check if that's greater than zero. And if it is, and the way um, these kind of checks work, comparisons more or less, is it'll start here and it'll check this. If this fails, then it stops and it will continue on to the next check. That's where we could even have some cases where we check for nil and then check for a specific ID or something like that. In this case, if it's less than zero, it won't do this next part of the AND. Now, if it was an OR, then it would, but since we're using AND, it won't. Um, so here we just want to check if our ticks are greater than or equal to our max. And then if it is, we just want to destroy the timer. Um, here's where we could go and do else. Um, I actually tend to prefer to do end and then just have this since this way it, it'll be real easy to see that if none of this works it'll just do this next thing. Um, it won't really be dependent on which one of these even if one of you know even if I mean, in this case it doesn't really matter because both of these are going to destroy the timer but I still just out of habit kind of do it structure my stuff in a little different way sometimes. Um, but again, it's it's up to you how you do that. Um, one thing you note in Lua is that won't work. It doesn't actually have a plus, you know, uh, plus equals kind of operator. Um, a lot of other languages will to where you could just do that, and that would increase that value by one. But in Lua, we actually have to be <coughs> more explicit and do it that way. Um, so this basically has our timer tick function set up so that way and we could put this up at the top and make it you know to where it always runs but to me I don't really care about increasing that if the process is available or if the timer needs to be destroyed to me it doesn't really matter it only be if one of those two actions doesn't occur then we want to do this for sure um, 
But then after that, all we got to really do now is set up our timer. Um, a couple of things with the timer. I'm going to create timer. Um, so the first variable it takes is uh, its parent, um, which isn't entirely necessary. If you're making a trainer, you'll want to pass the form to it. Um, I just had a habit like to pass that main form to it. At one point, it may have just been because of my system or something goofy I was doing, but I was getting errors until I actually did this. Um, I've had, you know, talked it, talked about it to a number of people, and it didn't seem like anybody else was having that problem. So, again, not completely necessary, but at the same time, again, being more explicit to me, this helps really illustrate that I want it to belong to the main form. Um, and again, if you were doing a trainer, you want it to be your trainer form. So this way, if that ever closes, it'll automatically kill the timer. Because in this case, we're, if we don't have a form, we don't really need a timer running anyway. Um, but in reality, Cheat Engine's main form, if that ever closes, everything's going to close with it. You know, it doesn't allow anything to stay open when that main form closes. You can hide it, you can do a number of things, but once it's closed, it's all things related to it are going to be automatically close basically everything of cheat engines so here let's go ahead and set our interval and we just want to use that main variable and again I just like doing this so this way I can kind of see these are all my variables we can even be a little more explicit and change the location of some of these change the location of some of these so that way we can kind of know these are our actual variables for this function and that or for this area of code and then this is stuff we don't really want to mess with these need to be the same defaults and it's only these that we ever want to change settings for um, but that's kind of up to you how to structure your code however you see fit so the tick function I talked about is actually on timer in um, Cheat Engine Lua. Um, and basically there we just want to make sure we don't call the function. We just want to actually pass it the function itself. And not, you know, because in this case if we actually called it we'd be passing, not, you know, nil to it since this doesn't return anything. That's pretty much got our timer set up. Um, not a whole lot to it as you can see we can go ahead and grab this code throw it in our cheat table Lua script let's stick it up top here and then we can see we correctly attach the process so this will set it up so we're always going to auto attach anytime this table is open and the Lua script is ran um, not completely necessary, but again, it's just something I tend to like to do. <coughs> so that's it for that. Um, on the next thing, I'm fixing to shoot another video here. We're going to go ahead and set up, I think it was a step six and step eight. Yeah, step six and step eight. We're going to go ahead and actually set up a timer for step six and then a thread for step eight to kind of show to make this table to where it's completely um, autonomous to some extent once everything's enabled we can just step through everything and it'll automatically deal with it. so that'll be in the next video